Hi everyone, welcome to another Broken Meeple Blitz review and we've got the Hotness from Portal which is Vienna Connection. Now I was tempted to do a detail review for this but then I thought there's only so much I can really say in addition to what I've already said before about Detective. So I thought a detail review might be going a bit too far but there's still plenty enough to say about this game now that I have gone through the whole campaign and for those not aware of this game this is essentially kind of like a side venture to Detective. So Detective when it came out was essentially this big deduction game, heavy deduction game. It takes you two to three hours per scenario. You played it in campaigns, you had to take notes, you had to, uh, that Antares database that you were uh, um, access through a web browser. And this allowed you to find out like mug shots, get information about fingerprints and stuff like that, and do research on the internet. It was very, very in depth. That's putting it mildly 007. But also very, very fun. Woohoo, I do like this game, but the connection is essentially utilizing the same system and i do mean really utilizing the same system it does a few tweaks to the to it but it's still going to be familiar territory to those familiar with detective you're expecting an exploding pen but it's changed the setting now instead of a modern day setting or the 80s setting as uh, the LA Crimes one had. This is now set in the late 70s in kind of Central Eastern Europe way. So we're talking Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, uh, Budapest, East and West Germany, you know, when those countries were around. And this is set during the Cold War. So this is very much your Cold War espionage style game. You go through a campaign of four scenarios this time, and much like in Detective, you have a deck of cards that has all the different leads that you can follow. Like, you know, you get a bit of information about a person, and your lead could be, well, go to this card if you want to find out where this person's located, or go to this card if you want to get more information from the people upstairs, you know, that kind of thing. And whilst doing this, though, you will come across all sorts of different files that you've got to read, all this information that's made available to you as you try and deduce whatever the like the concept or the plot of the scenario is. And they're quite varied in this one. The objectives do vary quite a lot. It's not just simply someone got murdered and find out who it is. No, this is... They're, they're standalone scenarios in a sense of, oh, this is a much different objective to what the previous one was, but they do come together in a cohesive narrative. Like, there is a bigger picture going on that all the scenarios in here individually relate to. So, in terms of the components, uh, well, you don't get a huge amount in terms of stuff you have to unbox, really. I mean, you have a few envelopes with the different things you need for each starting mission. So you've got those which you don't access until you need them. You've then got a like little flip pad that you just basically fill out. You cross off notches to say I've accessed like the white zone, the blue zone. You know, some areas are easier or harder to access than others. And of course, you've got your deck of cards with all the leads. Don't worry, this is not spoiling anything. The main thing that you do get, though, is this. Woo-wee! You look at it and it says top secret. It's like, ooh, okay, let me just peel open this. And it's like, wow. <laughs> this is a bundle of A4 files. Quite a lot. <laughs> and this is everything from transcripts to mug shots to maps to newspaper cuttings to notes scribbled on a file of facts by somebody you're tracking to bus timetables to uh, job adverts. And you name it, there's everything in here. And the deck of cards will tell you to go look at certain files and you'll pull them out of here and you'll use them as part of your like note taking. But there's a lot. There's a lot, a lot of information. We're talking Sherlock Holmes consulting detective levels of information that you need to trawl through here. Predominantly it's the same, but what are the differences? Well, key difference is this one takes code breaking to a new level. When you read the cards, it gives you these little number puzzles, like find out the next number in a sequence, and if you can decipher what those are, that tells you what file you need to look at. I mean, it's a little bit of a gimmick, but it's fun to do. What it really goes down and does, um, I'm not going to reveal it like in terms of photos because I don't want to spoil, but each envelope essentially has a cipher. It's all about ciphers and code breaking in this game. And what happens is they give you a little envelope and in it will have a little cipher and it will have like a code sequence on it. it tells you in the rule book how to like, approach them, how to solve them. And then frequently, whenever you're saying, oh, I need to contact the CIA for this, you'll get a card that has the cipher code on it. And using your little tag card that you've got, you'll try and go, all right, that means this, that means this. Ah, okay, look at this card or go meet at this place, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's neat. I mean, you know, it's not, we're not talking hard puzzles here. This is very simple puzzles. A child could do these, but it's nice. It gets you into that theme. 
On top of that, on the Antares database, you don't use the database as much as you did previously. That is something to bear in mind. Detective was very heavy on that. I mean, you looked up a ton of mugshots, you did fingerprint tracking, you did Wikipedia links, you name it, you did it. Here, you still have to look up Wikipedia for some stuff, and I do advise you do that, actually, because it does come in handy with some of the uh, plot threads. But for the most part, all you're using Antares for is the final mission report and these other puzzles that you have through the campaign and in individual scenarios where when you pick up a card, it will say, you've gained a puzzle fragment and it will give you some digits some color coding and that and letters. And effectively, you just fill in this little hangman style puzzle on the Antares database until you figure out the password, key it in, and then once you save it down, when you get to the end, it gives you like another bit of the ending that you found out. So I get the impression that this one is a little bit more accessible or a bit less frustrating in the sense of, yes, you're not going to really fail a scenario, but it's more about the endings you get. This one definitely has more branching paths. The other one still has a linear path, despite whether you pass or fail it. Here though, if you unlock certain passwords, it gives you extra bits of the ending, like you might catch a KGB agent and it's like, oh, ooh, what effect does that have on the campaign? But on top of that, if you solve the ones that are throughout the whole campaign that you get piece by piece, it will affect the endings you get in the final scenario. So yes, you'll succeed the whole campaign, but did you succeed it fully or did you not succeed it as well? You're getting different branching paths and different endings and that is cool from an immersive perspective. The detective game didn't have much replay value. You, you went through it once and that was pretty much it. Here though, it's the same sort of deal. Yes, you've got those branching paths, but that's mainly just for a couple of paragraphs of ending. It's not really that much of a, like a diversion. So you're really gonna play through this once and that's it. Not to say that's necessarily a bad thing because it's a very enjoyable experience. And in terms of duration for scenarios, you are still looking much like Detective at a 90 minute to three hour length for each scenario. And that's depending if you're playing it solo like I did or playing it with up to five players. Although it says up to five players, don't play this with more than three. Really, don't play this with more than three. There's not enough for everyone to do. You, know, you, you barely have to do anything on the Antares database, so that's not exactly a role. So only one person is needed to read out cards. Well, that's that done. Really, when you've got more people there, all you're adding is more people to discuss and go through all these files. That is what's gonna take up everybody's time in a good way, because there's a lot to sift through. But you really don't want to play this with more than three players, in my opinion. I think three people's a good number for three different people to compile their notes and really figure out the scenario and the setting. But you probably might find that you can get through the solo quite well, and I think it would make an excellent two-player experience. But four and five? No, I can't see four and five players working. It's easy enough to get into the game. The rule book was clear enough for me. Granted, I've had experience with detectives, so maybe that's slightly biased, but I honestly didn't have a problem with the rule book. It's got a reference aid at the back to look at various terms and new stuff like the ciphers and the fragment puzzles. But other than that, it's got pictorial representations of the stuff you're gonna see on the cards and what you're gonna read off the cards. And honestly, I found the rules to be pretty straightforward to follow. If anything, this is probably a more streamlined, polished version of what Detective was. That's probably one good way to uh, summarize it. But the immersion factor is one of the top things about this. It really is, and it's no different here. In fact, I would dare say this is more immersive than the other detectives and that saying something. This Cold War theme, I put on a tablet and I put on some uh, James Bond soundtracks or something in order to get myself immersed into this. Bond. James Bond. Listen to like The Spy Who Loved Me or Living Daylights or something while playing this and it's like, oh, you know, I'm right, really into this theme. But it's done very well. The story's good. The, the cards do not waffle on like crazy about what you had for last yesterday's lunch or whatever it was, you know, the, in the previous detective, it really did go on a lot about food, I noticed. But here, the stories are pretty concise, they're interesting, and as you're going through the campaign, it's really intricate. Like, you've got to be on the ball with these files, you should be taking notes. I personally didn't, beyond, beyond, um, beyond bullet points, and it made my life a little bit harder to understand the full setting, particularly when you get to mission four. I found myself following it pretty fine up until mission four. And then at that point, it's like, I don't know who are these people? And I don't know, what, what, wait, that happened, did it? Uh, uh, as names and places are thrown in your face. And bear in mind, we're in Central Europe. You know, we're in like Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and then we're heading more closer towards Budapest in USSR type territory. 
and when you get names from those countries, it's not like it's Grimsby or Birmingham. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not even going to pronounce half the names because I can't pronounce half the names I see in here. But you're going to get those thrown at you. You better take notes. If you're one of those people who does one of those big mind map things you see in movies where like the string goes from various place to place with notes, then good on you because you'll probably do very well at comprehending what's going on here. So all in all, when it comes to Vienna Connection, I would take this as kind of like a sideline to detective, almost like a big bumper expansion DLC pack. You do not need the original detective to use Vienna Connection. It's its own thing, so you could buy this completely separately from this one. This is definitely an easier campaign than the original detective, because A, I don't know if you can really fail it, but also B, I think it's a bit easier to follow what's going on in this one than possibly in the original detective, because that one was quite a mind scroll. <laughs> that was a mind bender the follow I think the original one but it's definitely not as simple as say detective season zero or was it season one I can't remember the expansion DLC thing I reviewed last year and obviously it's not compatible with the other sort of little mini packs that have come out for detective that's all based on this system but this is essentially like more of the good stuff they've changed the setting they've polished the system a little bit they've given you a bit more sort of paper stuff to work with rather than the electronic side but all these files are really cool I mean it's really authentically detailed it really does put you in that setting the story is good the deduction part is still good you know trying to figure out what on earth are the links with all these things it's a solid game through and through it really is it's just not gonna this isn't like a revolutionary change to what Detective was. It's essentially, hey look, we've tried a different setting and we've polished a few things. Here you go. Here's another bit of Detective goodness. So as much as it says Detective Investigation System, you might as well call it Detective colon Vienna Connection really. But as I say, that's not a bad thing. This is still getting a 9 out of 10 from me. I really enjoyed my time with this. It's so, I'm sad to have completed it now. Now that I've done it, I have no use for it. You know, I can't replay the scenario again with other people. So that is the case with these. You have to bear in mind this is a once through thing. But it's one of the best deduction systems I've played to the whole detective series in general. So every time they do release some of these, I'm very excited to play it. And I thought the Cold War espionage uh, setting with 1970s and that, I think was one of the perfect settings to use for a game like this. Really immersive, pretty polished, you know, would take you a good amount of hours to get through the four person campaign. Just cap your player count at three, I would recommend, and be sure to take notes. So that's it from me on this review. If you like what you see, please consider leaving a thumbs up on the video. It means the loyal to me to know that you're appreciating the content. Also, don't forget that this channel is sponsored by zatu.co.uk. I get you 5% discount on your entire basket of games if you use my code in the description. And when Vienna Connection is on sale, which I think is actually this week as I record this video, then you could save yourself a few quid and get yourself a quality game in the process. Don't forget to check out the content on the rest of this channel, including a few years ago where I did my actual review of Detective you can check out that one but also if you want to know what I thought about the season one add-on that they did for detective you can check out my review I did for that in last year so until next time take care and remember as always whatever setting you're in it's still only a game bye for now